is the electric car dream over? Now, motoring industry bosses are warning that the price of electric cars could increase by a further £6,000. That's if Rishi Sunak fails to reach a new deal with the EU on tariffs. Now, the Prime Minister is reportedly pushing the European Commission to delay the implementation of new post-Brexit trading rules due to come out into force in January 2024. However, Brussels has so far shown no signs of budging. That's leaving British car manufacturers facing the prospect of 10% tariffs on export sales. That's something the Trade Commission says could cut EV production by up to 480,000. This follows Rishi Sunak's decision to delay the ban on all new petrol and diesel cars until 2035, a decision critics argue will harm the electric car industry. So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, is the electric car dream over? Well, joining me to discuss, Jim Dale, Senior Meteorologist at the British Weather Services, Andrew Montford, he's the Director of Net Zero Watch, and Quentin Wilson, the Motoring Journalist and Star. Right, so I'm going to start with you, Quentin. Um, the electric car dream, I know you're quite passionate about them, you've had a few of them. Uh, talk to me about whether you think it's a flourishing dream or whether you think it's actually over. No, it's, it's, it's going fine. I mean, this, this war between the EU and, and the UK on, on what's known as the rules of origin, they'll sort this out. I mean, it's, it, it applies as much to Germany as it does to us. I mean, they imported 2 million cars into the UK. We're one of the biggest markets. So they would be committing an, an act of, of, of mutual self-destruction if they, they go, th go through with this. So I can see the EU and, and the UK sorting this out and, and not allowing all those Chinese cars to come into the UK and sweep our market away. So, so this isn't the end. And look, you drive around, you, you look on, on the roads, there are millions now. It's, it's, it's 1.5 million uh, uh, electric cars in the UK driving around quite happily. And people like them. And they're not, as, 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 as Dr. Fox said, the batteries failing regularly. They're not. And you can recycle them. 95% of them can be recycled, uh, the content. Um, they are working very well. That, that fire at Luton Airport wasn't caused by an EV. So, you know, we just need to understand that there's a large body of people out there globally, as well as in the UK, who drive EVs and they work really, really well. Mm, but they're very expensive, Quentin. And uh, I mean, they have been, I've seen one that just literally caught fire on the drive for no real reason. It wasn't even switched on, it was plugged in. And they're very difficult to put out. That's, that's a problem with them, isn't it? I mean, what do you do if, say, there's a motorway fire with, with a load of those? Do you, do you just wait till it finishes burning or what? How, how do you put one out? So for the record, we have 100,000 car fires in the UK every year. Last year, it was about 243 EVs. So it's a tiny proportion of the, the entire car park. Battery technology is improving. So you won't have things like cobalt in batteries. They won't be so. You'll have lithium, lithium iron phosphate batteries, which don't catch fire as readily. Um, and, and the fire service is learning how to do this. You know, this is at the infancy technology. So, you know, as I keep saying to you on a, on, a, on a regular basis, let's not shoot it down and destroy it because ultimately it's good for jobs, it's good for the UK, it's good for air quality and it's good for energy security. And quite soon we're going to see oil go through the roof. Well, let us get Andrew Montford in there. He's a director at Net Zero Watch. Uh, Andrew. Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, f there's a few things there. Um, I think um, what Quentin said about um, batteries improving is, is true, but um, there is a major problem with EV batteries in that they do uh, um, uh, set on fire spontaneously. And in, in particular, they do that when the car is parked. Now, mo um, uh, petrol and diesel engines do also um, um, burst into flames, but it tends to be when the car's moving and therefore it's not going to cause damages, damage to anything else. So there, there is an issue there, and I think that also applies to hybrids. To come back to your, your original question, though, um, is the EV dream over? Um, Certainly, I think if we get an extra six thousand pounds on on the cost of an EV, then yes, um, it almost certainly is over because they're they're you know they're they're a toy for rich people at the moment. They're they're, they're very very expensive, even once you take into account um, the subsidy. But there are a whole lot more problems coming down the line that are going to make it very very difficult for EVs to expand. The most important one, and one that is not talked about very much is um, the, the capacity on the distribution grid, that's the electricity wires mm -hmm. through our towns and villages, um, they don't have the capacity for everybody to have an EV. 
So mm -hmm. essentially, if we want the EV dream to continue, then we're going to have to dig up every single urban road in the UK. And that is going to cost the most extraordinary amount of money, which we just don't have at the moment. Jim Dells was rolling his eyes at the prospect of digging up uh, all the streets in the UK. I mean, come on, what, what, why are you rolling your eyes? I'm rolling my eyes because it's not true, that's why. Uh, well, of course it is. How are you going to put the charging points in and stuff? Well, they're going to have to dig up the streets. You can't just stick them temporarily. Yeah, yeah. what Andrew just said is just, it's just exploding something that is probably not going to exist. We, we, you know, the, the evolution of electric cars, of hybrids, I listened to Dr. Fox as well, who puts a lot of sense in this. One word not mentioned, by the way, and remember I'm a meteorologist, uh, lower climate changing gases is the, is the be all and end all as far as why we're going in in the electric uh, electric version yeah there, there is a halfway house it's hybrid i drive a, a hybrid car um i think there's no stopping this i think i think we're around about 15 percent of all cars now are electric yes th th there, th there is and there will be uh problems along the way that need to be solved the same problems that occurred with petrol and diesel cars in their infancy and still and 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 they blaze as quentin's already said um you know, I, I tell you what Quentin said, I, I, it talks a lot of sense. He knows the industry. Um, and from just from a purely pollution point of view and climate changing point of view, this is the direction of travel. And it doesn't matter what Andrew says in supporting the fossil fuel industry, which is what he's doing. Uh, this is coming uh, despite the problems with Brexit and with uh, Johnson's meddling around with that and has left us in, in a little bit of a, a difficult situation. But Quentin's right. That will be got over. That's a, for the politicians to get over and it will be. Well, you say this is a direction of travel, but if people don't have six, the extra money, I mean, what's one EV is about 44 grand at the moment. Uh, an extra six grand will make it about 50 grand. Um, I don't have 50. I can't afford one. I'm going to stick with my Citroen C1. You know, no, what, 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 sorry, Quentin, go. Yeah. Oh, Quentin, you go. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's made a couple of points here. There are no subsidies for electric cars anymore. Uh, diesel cars absolutely catch fire when they're standing still. The Vauxhall's a fairer. Vauxhall had to do a huge recall on that. Um, you know, we, when we're saying these things on national television, we must be sure of the facts. And, and Nana, uh, uh, you know, electric cars, secondhand electric cars are now up parity with combustion cars. They're coming down all the time. I mean, 20, you say 44,000 pounds, you could buy fantastic electric cars, brand new for 25 grand. Yeah, um, but what would the range be? Okay, give me a good car, an electric car for 25 grand that will get me with decent range because it'll be like the cheapskate version that won't get me far. It would be, be 250, 260 miles. It would be as good as a Tesla. Well, you know, like that, what car? Give, give me an example because you know your cars. Give me an example of a car that's good. Oh, really, really good car. Which the one? BYD Donkey. You know, these these are great, great cars. Sadly, they're made in China. Oh, so, right. you know, you'll, you'll have to buy them. But that doesn't mean to say the quality is is, is any worse than, than, than cars made in, in Germany and and in America with Tesla. So look, let's let's all understand that we need to get this right before we start rubbishing this whole energy transition, which is going to be really great for jobs, for 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 for, for our children, for air quality, and for energy security. Yeah. We cannot carry on burning oil. But you say air quality. It's air quality where you are when you're driving the car. But the carbon footprint of the electric car is huge. Andrew, I mean, surely. You're better off with, you know, running down your actual car now than buying an EV and being forced to do that because the carbon footprint to even make one and then get all the components is massive, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, the, the mathematics on this is, is, is highly disputed. There are a lot of people who say that the carbon footprint of building an EV is, is, is so high that, um, um, it, it takes, you know, um, a decade or more to, to sort of repay that carbon debt. That's true. There's also very um, big um, air quality issues with um, particulates coming off the tyres of EVs because EVs are much heavier than their petrol and diesel equivalents. That I don't think that that is disputed. Um, um, I don't think it's as big, big an issue as some people say. But yeah, you know, the, the fact remains that um, you know Jim Jim sort of rolls his eyes and says it's not true that that um, the, the grid won't take it. It is true. Um, you know, the grid is sized on one or two kilowatts per house. Okay, now if you have a six kilowatt 
uh, uh, EV charger in every house, you're going to blow the grid. I speak to people within the grid who are telling me that this is a major issue and that is they it? are having to, they well, are well, having listen, to put in remedial I'm measures. running out of time, Quinn. So I'll give you 10 right. seconds, Quinn, to return because I'm actually going to get right in now. trouble now. So, Quinn, in 10 seconds, quickly. Andrew, I speak to people at, at National Grid as well, and they say unquestionably... No, no, it not can National cut. Grid. Not National Grid. National Grid is the transmission grid. I'm talking about the distribution grid. OK. Well, Let's uh, inject some positivity into this. I'm going to have to go. go. This is... The, this is this is only just getting good, but I've got to go to the news. But thank you so much, Andrew Bond, for Director of Net Zero, Quinton Wilson, motorist journalist, and also Jim Dale, senior meteorologist. Thank you so much for your views. Always good. What do you think, though? Is the electric car dream over? Are you going to buy one? I don't think so.